My name is David Pratt and I'd like you to welcome you to a demonstration of the new target visit in Model Vision. First of all, we've got part of an aeromagnetic survey in Burke, New South Wales, Australia that we want to analyse a couple of circular anomalies that are associated with intrusive pipes. Let's first have a look at the density of flight line data that was used to acquire the data. Here's the flight lines. We want to zoom in and have a look at these two, two anomalies. We'll do the bottom anomaly first and then we'll come back and do the second of the two anomalies. Close down the configuration menu for, the, for now. I'll zoom in in more detail on the second anomaly. Now we need to select the data that we're going to work with for the interpretation of this anomaly. So to do that, we'll select the target wizard and the first thing we want to do is draw a polygon around the target. And we'll choose a, an area perhaps just outside the last contour. Double click to close it. And each region has a name. We'll call this pipe 1. We can come back to that later if we need to. Click on OK. If we press the preview button, that will show us the area that will be active for, for the calculation of the regional and the modeling of the data. And we'll just zoom out a little to check the area of coverage. This is the data inside the blue polygon that will become active for the modeling process once we get into the detail part. The initial regional will be worked out over all the flight line data. We'll select, say, eight lines. The number 8 refers to the number of cross sections that will be displayed rather than the active data points for the inversion. And then click apply. Now it asks you to save the master session and we'll open a target session. So we'll keep all of our data. We'll click on save. Um, currently we have no models in there that are active. We click on compute to, to produce an initial regional fit and we'll close the target wizard for the moment. Now each line has optimized scaling for the individual section, but in this mode we really want to have the same scale across all sections. So if we click, right click in the one with the greatest range and say apply scale to all, we can see now that they've all got the same vertical scale with a regional that's modestly close but a little bit too high across the area. So we're now ready to start the modeling process we're going to insert a starting model in the map view. So we make the map view active, bring up the create body uh, dialog, we'll choose the circular pipe, and we'll give a top depth of say 200 meters, and a depth extent, so they're not worried about the bottom of the pipe, of 2,000 meters. We'll just drag out a rectangle somewhere between the high and the low, and that'll be the initial model. Now if we click on compute, we've got an anomaly roughly in the right place. The amplitudes aren't right and the depths probably aren't uh, right as well. But we're now ready to start the modeling process. We've only had to insert a starting body. So to start the inversion process, we click on tools. We are inverting on magnetic data. We could apply this to gravity data as well. Click on inversion magnetic. And this controls the inversion for the, the whole process. For a simple anomaly like this, we probably only need about three to 500 data points. So we'll decimate the data by a factor of, say, 10. Now remembering that's in the area covered by red. These are the active points. So the misfit is about 9%. Uh, we now bring up the free parameter dialog. We'll allow x and y and z to be free. We'll let the property float and we'll also let the radii uh, float. Click on run. Just to check 
I'll move this to control. We'll now set the regional free and allow the slope to vary and we'll run it again. It's a minor adjustment but we now have a reasonable match. Now we finished the first phase of modelling one anomaly. It's time to move on to the second anomaly. So we'll close down the inversion window for the time being. We first want to save the session that we have now created. We have a reasonable match. So we'll come up to the file menu and we'll go to the option called Restore Subsession to Master. We're going to save the current subsession so that we can come back to it if we need to. Just choose the default name which appends the name pipe1.cess to the original session file name. Click on Save. It then comes back to the original session file. Just to show you that, I will zoom out to the whole data set. These are the active lines that we use for that particular model. We'll zoom in to the area. We want to now model this one. So we're going to zoom and select an area around that. We're going to click on the target wizard again. We'll draw a new polygon for this target. Make sure we've got enough data around the outside. And we'll call this pipe 2. Click OK. Preview the lines that we've got selected. And then click Apply. We'll select 8 for the windows again. Click Save. Compute. Close down the dialog. And now we want to rescale the lines for the maximum range which is probably this section, apply scale to all. And you notice we have one little noisy point on here. We've got enough background to pick up the, uh, the regional. Same as before, bring up the insert body dialog. Click on circular pipe again. This time we'll make the top depth say 100 meters and the depth extent say 2000 again. Drag out a rectangle between the two and we're ready to start the inversion process again. I will click Compute just to see how the initial model response looks. Go to the Tools menu, bring up Inversion Magnetic. Note that we're already still using uh, a decimation factor of, of 10. We could change that by going to the data menu and say, let's choose 7. So we get a few more data points. And this time we're going to free X, Y, Z, radii, property, and we'll do the regional slope and level together. Click Run. We now have a match that's reasonable for uh, the whole anomaly, uh, but we'll return this control back to the master menu. So we go back to File, Restore Subsession to Master, Save the Subsession, I'll zoom out to the whole lot and just zoom in. We now have two bodies that we've, uh, we've modelled, and we can repeat this process and we can keep a check on how the models are going. We have on the first body that we did a depth of around 270 metres and on the second we have a depth of around 250 metres. Fairly consistent, we can use this for depth mapping, we can use it for shape mapping. We may want to come back and refine those bodies at a later stage. But the process of doing multiple bodies uh, and choosing the body type uh, is now very fast.